Grab all you can get. Sure. It's only gas. God, I hope that gas seal works. That uh, the seal we put in it. Yeah. We'll find out soon enough. This mustache out here in Downey, California, a little small, small town in between the 710 and the 605, right off the 105. This is my little shop. Just working on a Chevy 49 Fleet Line for my wife. Two door. We got it body drop, traditional style. Raise the floor two inches. Brought the frame up a little bit to lay past the rockers. So it lays completely flat to the skirts. All Talk right. to me, Goose. All right. So, uh, we're in park? Yep, in okay. park. Everything looks good. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Hit it. Stop. What's going on? Turn on the key? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Well, then this must, must not be the coil one. Should at least pop something. I have that plug you have that we need to change up. Yeah, we do. So today's is the first day we try to start it up. We're running into little problems. The battery got a little low. We're charging it now. Okay, key on. You ready? Keys on. Hit it again. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ready? Yep. Hit it again. All right. What do you want me to do? Hit it again. Ooh, what's that? Didn't sound good. Do it again. Yeah, stop, stop, stop. What is it? I think it just fucking broke something on the starter. Really? Yeah. It's not a good time for that. No. Oh, yeah. What is it? Move the snout off the starter. So we're no good? No good. Not going to start it. Fucking motherfucker. It backfired. Yeah. And it backfired internally, and it blew the front of the the aluminum part off the starter. Embarrassing. Yes, very. Good thing I don't build, I don't build starters, so. No. Um, so we take that to the starter guy? Yeah. That was a bust. It was. But it, it's always things. When you're building cars, it's always things. It's, it's never easy. It's never, the road is never easy. Put your hand down there by the trans oh and wiggle oh the front of the starter. You'll, it's not hot. You don't have to worry about that. It's not hurting on you. You're hurting when it's kicking over. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, what causes that? The backfire. <laughs> We're under three months, though, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we still got warranty. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> we do. We no, do. The guy warranties it for 90 days, so yeah. take it back to him. Okay. It may have a fracture. He warranted the starter for 90 days, and it's been three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. You should get a lonely teardrop. I'm glad we didn't buy this from Amazon, because Amazon would not have it back that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, their turnaround time is 14 days. <laughs> yeah. You're screwed. Here at Mustache Custom, I specialize in suspension work. I'm gonna call the, the starter guy, have him come and take it off oh. and fix it here <laughs> and put it back on. I'll be like, dude. Call him. Anything, anything, to, anything you can think of to lay them on the ground. Lowering jobs, static drops. It's all in my background.
Well, technically, there's nothing out here. That's why I like it. Um, all you got is the Marine base, a Moose Lodge, and you know a lot of retired people. It's nice and quiet. Uh, my wife's parents live down the road, so it's easy to go take care of them. Well, out here around Landers, you got Johnson Valley where they do King of the Hammers all the time. I mean, we're close to the 29 Palms Marine base, and we're about oh 45 minutes from Palm Springs. We're up the mountain. So you got Yucca Valley, it's right about 20 minutes down the hill. So you're about two and a half hours from Vegas, cutting out the back. But this is 246, this is like the back road to Big Bear in Vegas for everybody. They all like to cruise out here. I'm Glenn Dietrich, um, owner of BG Fabrication. Got my new shop here at home, so now I'm just really working on trucks, building chassis, stuff like that. Uh, currently at the moment, I'm building Jeff Callahan's uh, C10. Uh, chassis. He's got a 74 square body he's building. This one's going with the LSX uh, 454 with the uh, six speed sequential transmission. You got the winner's quick change in the rear, wheel with brakes all the way around. That's my end of it. I know he wants to go some more. I'm waiting for a brand new bed to show up for it. Well, usually I get kind of get the layout of whatever vehicle I'm going to be doing. Go from there. I'll either set it up here on the jig table or I'll take body mount notes for whatever I'm building. So we gotta make sure we got enough room because these chassis are also designed to lay frame. They got the pro touring tile, or style uh, geometry to them so we could run coilovers. And then you could also put in shock waves. The frame rails are also air tanks. So that way, you know, you get the best of both worlds. That's why I kind of design in all the chassis I make as far as the C10 trucks go. And go from there. The C10, I pretty much already got that done. We uh, we kind of used my buddy's truck out here as the guinea pig. And then we built my, my work truck, kind of same style. My background's in stock car racing, so I incorporated a lot of it into that truck. I'm using a lot of stock car parts. Uh, the rear end's a floating rear end. It's a five link. The axle sits on bird cages, so it actually rotates. You now they float, so you use these clamps, you know, to keep it centered where you want. But if you unhook this, hook everything, you know, spin around and stuff. It's fun. You can have a lot of fun. It's kind of hard, like I said, it's kind of hard to break the tires. Mm -hmm. And this is another one I'm building for another customer. I fell in love with that truck, and he wants the same thing. So pretty much, I already got all this measurements and everything down. We're just fine tuning in a little bit, you know, making tweaks, changes here and there. He's running an LS and I'm running a small block, um, old school Chevy in line. So the he heights are different. Cap heights are like, everything's different. I usually put the frame all the way down on the ground or on the table and then design everything around that. So nothing hits, the motor don't hit, nothing, everything clears. Mine's about a quarter of an inch from laying rockers without cutting anything. Um, so it'll lay frame and I got about a quarter inch gap before rockers hit the ground, which is nice. I still use it as a work truck, mm -hmm. so it's still got to be a little bit practical, but then I get to race it too. So I can't wait for that to come out hopefully soon. So right now I'm just kind of making sure I got enough room for the shock waves and the coilover for when we swap in and out. Because um, the fronts run a double bellow bag on the shock waves. So I roughly got to have five inches clearance right in here, right at the top. Everything else is prepped fine. And then I got this one set at 50-50. I've talked to the guys uh, at Ride Tech and they gave me all the notes and everything, everything I need. That's where I'm going with this one. Just gotta make sure I got room for both. I get the brackets cut out. And I'm still gonna make some. I'm just gonna make sure I got the right height angle. Give me the small uh, square over there, Brad. Run over here and design a park. Yeah, I know. What are you doing, boy? That's where he spends time when I'm doing stuff and he needs to kill time. He doesn't have uh, a lot to do. We built that uh, this summer. It's Baja Edge of Control, and you just you have different racing options. You can do free roam. You have Baja Career, which is just you race other people. Twice. And you can usually see the bracket, won't you? 
start taking out all the construction line. This is a, I just picked this up too, this new table. Uh, right as COVID started too, there in Vegas, uh, from STV, it was super helpful. I love this new table. We got enough room there. Oh, there Plenty of room for uh, shockwave. Let's coil over. I want to change that. The only thing I want to change is bring it up just a little bit more. Five about. Uh, I want to raise it a quarter of an inch. Back to the drawing board. I like to cut left and right. Oh, wait. Paint. Down there. Bam. Just like that. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Tino, and we're here at my shop, Max Built, in Indio, California. Right now, what we're working on is getting Accuor installed on Yoshi's chassis. Uh, right now what I'm measuring is I'm going to make a small bracket that's going to bolt on here to, to hold the computer. NWT tank will be mounted inside the blazer and we're going to run all the electrical lines coming out. It sits right here. We can also access it from the rear if something does happen or we got to change something out. Uh, there's a bottom hatch underneath the, the floor so we'll be able to get to it but we're just going to make a small bracket right now. That, that will giant inventory. Yeah, inventory everything, that's what I need to work on next. Once I get done with these trucks. This is, this is what, it, like I said, this is a true one-man shop, you know? Garage or whatever you want to call it. All my trucks have had portal built. Dimples has portal built. Yo Yoshi's have, has portal built. Uh, this actually kit that portal built designed is uh, the first full bla blazer kit they, they designed for a blazer square body, kit K5. Um, nobody had a complete rear kit at the time. And like I said, it was supposed to be out last year, but due to some issues, we didn't get it out. But this year, we're, we're coming out with it. Portal Build's probably been, I would say, almost four years now. Um, but I bought my first kit for the 67 C10 that I was originally going to build a long time ago, which I tore it apart and had the kit there. And uh, I decided not, not, to, not that I didn't decide to do it, just decided to go to a, a different route. You know, they've just been very, you know, I see them as family. They've supported me from day one where, you know, I wasn't even Maxfield. It was just a guy building trucks in his garage. They supported me with helping me out with kids and working with me and, and gave me the opportunity, you know, to build some trucks and uh, use their, their parts. American Racing supporting us with the, uh, they supported us with the wheels on uh, Dead Impulse for uh, SEMA 2016. And this year they're working with us again on Yoshi for 2017. Just, I think, smoothly the classic look for these trucks. It's like a, you know, a uh, lowrider, everything at wire wheels. I think it's just classic. Yeah? That's just the look that fits that style. I think these, these C10s are similar with the smoothies. The statement they put when they started putting them on. You know, it, it just looks good, you know. I've heard there's other build it wheel designs that have an actual pattern on them that also look good on some of these square bodies and some of these C10s. You know, I think it's all pretty much comes down to the owner's choice. You know, they, what they want to see, what they want to feel the truck to look like. Like Yoshi, we're actually doing two different wheels. We're doing a smoothie on one side with a factory style cap. And the other side is going to have a, a five uh, piece, a five spoke design and build a wheel. And we've, we've built a great relationship with them. Chris and John have really helped me out and uh, you know, supported me and I'm very thankful for that. But they're definitely making a big push into the C10 game. They're designing all kinds of wheel styles. They're working with a lot of guys that are building trucks. And I think it's great, you know, they've been around for a long time. A lot of people remi remember American Racing as a classic, you know, the five sports uh, torque thrust wheels. But they're definitely making a name for themselves out here in, in the C10 game with these, and going from the traditional 17, 18 inch wheel up to the 22, 24 inch, 26 inch big billets now that a lot of guys are putting on their trucks. It's great to see them, you know, uh, expand that way. And, for us as well, because it gives us more uh, options and more opportunities. 